Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm sitting on a pretty good size yellow pine log. This log is 22 feet long. It's 20 inches at the butt and 17 in the, at the tip. And I've got to cut a big beam out of this, but this is a little more weight than my old tractor really needs to be picking up. My old tractor's a little bit like me. He's not a spring chicken. So I won't ask him to pick this up. So what I'm gonna do is take a slab off of this side and this side back side here to reduce some of the weight so that I can actually pick this log up and set it on the mill. I've got to mill a timber out of this. And so what I'm gonna do, just cut two sides of it off to reduce some of the weight. Well, that's certainly not the prettiest rip I've ever made, but I'm thinking it may be the biggest, but I've got quite a bit of the weight off of it so that we can probably pick it up with the tractor, set it on the mill. Well, we've got this log slabbed off to get rid of some weight and the tractor was able to uh, set it up here on the mill. We're gonna use the Woodland Mills HM126 that I'm so thankful that we've got. And we're gonna rip this down to get a six inch thick timber and whatever height that we can get out of it is what we're gonna try to do. So we're gonna fire up and start sawing. So watch your eyes for the sawdust, the wind's blowing. We're kind of taking our time sawing this timber up. We're cutting some from one side, flipping it, and cutting some from the other side. It's pretty heavy, so we're, we're actually using a tractor and a strap to pick it up to flip it over. We've got it down to eight inches thick, and I've got to saw the bottom side. This will be the top, and we've got to get our six inches thick of uh, timber that, we've, that we need. And I don't know if I even said what this is gonna be for, we're getting ready to build a sawmill shed, and this will be one of the timbers for the long opening. It will actually span 20 feet. And so we're trying to get as much depth out of this timber as we possibly can. And this is the only timber that we've got. So we're having to really be cautious to uh, make sure we don't mess something up. So hang with us, we'll eventually get this timber sawed. Okay, we're about to make our last cut. We're gonna end up with a, a timber that's six by 13 and a half, which I was trying to get as much of the depth of the timbers I could possibly get to span the, the 20 foot opening. So we're about to finish it up and then move it off of the mill. It's taken a while, but we finally got it. We had to be really, really careful because we did not have a log to replace this. This will be sufficient to do what we need to do with it.
the uh, post set and braced off, which was a pretty good chore we did day before yesterday, I think it was. We've dealt with a lot of rain this year. We've had some kind of precipitation every week this entire year. But we're trying to get these ready to cut off where they need to be at the top. If you can see here in Arkansas, we have rocks and red clay. You can see there at the bottom of that post, it's been burned. I did the Shosugi bond on all of these. I burned the very bottoms and up about just a little bit over four feet. So we've got our holes about three foot deep, some a little bit more. And we put gravel in the very bottom of the hole and tamped it real good before we set the post in on top of it. Now I like to use gravel around a post. Uh, some people will use cement, but there's a lot of water that comes off of this hill where we are, and it actually will seep through the ground. The gravel will let the water dissipate from around the post, and it won't just set on the post. If I used concrete and the post happened to shrink a little bit, then there would be a gap all the way around it at the top where water could get down in there. Now this is red cedar. It's what we use here for fence posts and uh, pole barns or whatever. But we've got everything braced off and ready to go. We set the top batter board that you see there's actually two sets. The top one is up high enough so that we could pull a diagonal with our 100 foot tape from corner to corner and be up above the track on the sawmill. And then I dropped back down and set another one closer to the ground. And I just took my level and I plumbed down from our mark and got a mark on the bottom there. And we stretched the string so that we could get the bottoms of the post lined up. And we plumbed the two corner posts both ways. And I got up there and I put a string on. I think the string, yeah, the string's still over here on this side. But that's how we got the tops lined up at the bottom and we just had to plumb them from side to side and uh, put a side brace on it. I've got all the posts cut off on the, at the top where they need to be. It's a pretty good chore, but I hope I've got them where they need to be. I think I have. I did a lot of measuring and remeasuring, calculation and recalculation because I didn't have any room for an error here. I put the string on the top of the batter boards. I drove a nail just above the string and I was able to hook my tape on that nail and measure up where I needed to be to actually cut the top off.